Hey there and welcome to another Excel VBA video. Many people think that to be a good VBA programmer you have to write extremely complex looking code. This is actually a myth. A really good programmer they want to write code that's easy to read. If code is readable then it's easier to understand, it's easy to update but most of all it will significantly reduce the number of errors in your code. And this is good because errors can waste a ton of your time. So in this video, I'm going to show you seven simple but extremely effective ways for making your code readable. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at is declaring variables. In VBA, we don't actually have to declare variables and we can write code just like this. Now, writing code without declaring variables, it means we don't really know the type that we're dealing with and it can lead to other problems as we're about to see. You can see here that we spelt total wrong in the second case, we've put an O instead of an A. And the problem with this code is that it will actually run perfectly. And by perfectly I mean without any errors being given. But actually the value is wrong, so it should be returning a total of 100, but it returns a total of 50 instead. Now if we use declare variables, if we insist that they're declared, we must use option explicit. So this phrase basically means that you have to declare your variables. So we run a debug compile and this will tell us that we've got errors. So we basically don't have total defined. So we define total, we declare it here, and this basically tells us what exactly we're going to use it for, which is a long integer. Now we use a debug compile again and this spots the second error because the second one hasn't been declared. So if we don't insist on declaring variables, what it actually does is it, VBA just creates a new variable. And this time you see we got 100. Now if you want, instead of typing option explicit every time, we can basically just change one of the settings under tools options. And that setting is require variable declaration. So if we check this, every time we create a new module, VBA will automatically add option explicit. So let's just show you this Insert new module and you can see it's got option explicit at the start. And now you know exactly why we use option explicit. So this is something you'll often see in a VBA sub. The top of the sub is basically used for a dumping ground for any variables that get declared. Now this is, while it's kind of a safe thing to do, you know the variables declared, it actually makes the code very messy and it's not exactly clear where the variables are being used. So what I like to do is declare the variables as I use them. So let's look at a simple example of doing this. So here I'm declaring range. And I'm going to use the range to get the current region. So if anyone looks at this code and they see set range equals sheet data and so on, they can just see the line before that I've just declared range. So it's very obvious that range wasn't used anywhere else. And it's very obvious that range has been used for the first time. So this is the same with our for loop. It just makes the code much more readable and much more obvious to what we're doing. So we've declared i, and now we've used a for loop, and we've put i in the for loop. So it's very, very clear. Now if in the future I say, okay, I wanna get rid of the code where I'm getting the current region, I wanna say, use different code here, then it's very easy to delete everything, and I know that I'm not leaving the variable somewhere else. I know that the variable hasn't been used anywhere else because I've just declared it before that line. So this is a very, very simple practice, but it's a very effective practice when it comes to making your code very readable. So if you work as a professional programmer, one thing you'll always do with your code is indent it because it makes it so much more readable. So what indenting basically means is that you tab the code between different statements. And for example, here we're gonna highlight all the code. We, sh we use shift and tab this moves the code a tab to the left until it's all lined up. And then we can easily highlight the code and just tab it all in one. So we do this because we have sub and end sub. And when we get to other lines, like the for loop, we're going to tab all the code between for and next. So we tab all the code like this, and then we press the tab button, and you can see that it tabs in the code. Now we do it again in the if statements, any statement basically that has an end like if, end if, select, end, select, with, end with. 
And another thing you can see me doing there is that I like to put in blank lines. So this makes the code readable. It's not on top of each other. It's very clear here the flow of our code. For loop, if statements, and then at the end we're using a with. So you can see if we compare this to the original code that we looked at, you can see that it's by far more readable. And it's very easy to debug the code and at a glance to see what the code is doing. So you'll often see code like this when you're writing VBA. So it has variable names that are not really that descriptive. And of course, there's whole debates all over the years about what is the right way, what's a convention for a variable name, what's the right way to name it, and so on. And actually, the easiest thing to do is just give it a descriptive name. Now, you don't need, in the old days, we used to do things like L for long, S for string. You don't have to do that. You can just use long descriptive names, and then it's very clear what they're being used for. Obviously, if something is customer name, then it's going to be a string. And if something is total amount, it's going to be some kind of number. Now, there's no problem typing here because as I'm showing you on the screen here, if you use control space, it will help auto-complete the variables. So you don't have to worry about the length of the names in case you're worried about it slowing down writing code. So one small thing just to keep in mind is that we always use I and J when it comes to loops. And that's just the convention, and that's the way it's always done, and the way it continues to be. So you can just leave the for loops as i and j, because that's just what people do. So this technique I've shown, very simple, but so much debates over the years have come about how variables and everything should be declared. So it's just important to get this right from the off. So what we have in programming is a thing we call magic numbers. And these are numbers that appear in our code that are not zero or one. When we say magic, we mean it's like they have some magical value where we don't really know what it re represents. So what we want instead of, instead of having this in the code, we should have the numbers being read from a worksheet or if they're actually in the code, they should be a constant or better still, they should be an enum. Now you can see in this line that I've just inserted a snippet here, you can see that six I multiplied by three plus four very, very difficult to understand what this code is doing and what's it about. And if we decide to replace the four, we're not quite sure if both of these fours are actually the same. Now, when we use paste special, we have different options like paste all, paste comments, paste formats. And all these are is basically text representations of a number. And I'll show you what this means when we have a look at our enums. So if we look at the enums up here, so enum is short for enumerator. Now we've got data columns, and for each one, we've put in a number. So we're basically saying DC amount equals one, DC check equals two, and so on. And the reason we do it is that we can now put DC check, DC result, and all these in our code instead of the numbers. So you can see here that it suddenly makes our code much more readable. And what it actually does as well is that if we want to change, say for example, DC bonus, say we want that column to now be column six, we can just change it in one place and it changes everywhere. But what's even more powerful is this. If we set the values of the enums so they're all related to each other like this. So we're saying that check equals the column amount plus one. We're saying that result equals the column check plus one and so on. And the beauty of this is that if we decide to move data columns, say we want to move our columns over to, we can just change the first column and then all the code is updated to reflect this. So this is a very simple but powerful method for making your code readable and also making it very, very easy to update. So this next one we're gonna talk about is the most common one that I see in Excel VBA and it's really unique to this language. It's where people refer to cells all the time in the code rather than using variables. Now the problem with this is it makes the code very difficult to read, as you can see in this case, because you have range cells everywhere. And also, if we have them in variables like you can see here, it makes the code just much more readable. So let's have a look here. We can put all the values into variables like amount, check, result and bonus. And then when we update the code, you can see very clearly that the code is much easier to read very easy to see exactly what's going on. And that means we're going to have less errors in our code. So I think this is, of all the ones that I'm showing you, this is probably the biggest one for making your code readable. And as I said, it's very, very unique to Excel VBA because we basically don't get ranges and cells in other programming languages. 
So our last principle we're looking at is do not repeat. So often you'll see people writing code like this. So they have like their main code and then they want to send an email. So they basically just put in all their email code afterwards. And so they can have the email code all over their application. And this is actually a bad idea. What we should have is just email code in one place. And then we call it from the other places. So if you think about it in a real world way, it's like if we had a small town and we've got one post office, we don't want to have post office all around our small town. We just want to have one. So when we send mail, we go to one place and we basically send mail from there. This makes it very, very convenient in our code because as we'll see in a minute, if we have it in many places, we can run into problems. So the differences that we'll have in the different places, so for example, who we're sending it to, the subject and so on, we basically make these the parameter of the sub. And now we want to use it, we call send email, and this basically sends it over to the email department, and then the email department just looks after sending the code. Now, why I said this was powerful was because, imagine in the future, we decide, okay, if Outlook doesn't exist, what we want to do is we want to send it by Gmail. So we can easily change the code in just one place here. And we don't have to change it in loads of different places or we don't have to go and find everywhere that Outlook was used. We basically just change the code in one place and then we put in our Gmail code like this. Now what tends to happen when people write code in all different places is that it tends to be a little different everywhere. And then when we have to change it, we run into lots of problems. So that's why it's much better to have just one place for one task. So that's the seven principles for making our code readable. Now I think you'll find that they're quite simple to implement and that they don't take much time, but the results that they have can be very, very powerful indeed. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to get notified when my new videos are published, then please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon beside it. Now, if you'd like some more free Excel VBA resources, then check out my website, excelmacromastery.com. There are major articles on all the major areas of Excel VBA. Each article has an easy to navigate table of contents, as well as a quick guide that allows you to easily find the syntax you need. And there's tons of coding examples that you can copy and use in your own macros. You'll also find techniques that are not available anywhere else. I also have a VBA tutorial and in this tutorial, there's lots of activities and solutions so that you can try them all for yourself and it's all absolutely free. So that's all for me and I hope to see you on my next video.